Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Everyone doing good today? How are you enjoying this cool weather outside? Isn't it wonderful? It's a good day to be in God's house. We're going to play a song for you, and we'll sing some, okay?
need a book for this one. Chapter of Hebrews. 
I know this is so because I heard Bass phone go off at one minute after 12 last night. I know we got a birthday in there today. <laughs> Might be twins or something. I don't know. Raise your hands anyway. <laughs>
sunny, cool, breezy autumn day in the Carolinas. Boy, that's a sweet time. It's still summer. 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 It is still summer. It is still summer. It is all of here today. It was good. It was good. My daughter called me the other day and said, Daddy, it's cold. I said, God turned the air conditioning on for us a little bit. Give us a little break. I enjoy the spring and the fall of my favorite two seasons. And they go by so fast here now. It used to seem like it was a longer fall and a longer spring in the Carolinas, but now. I was talking to somebody the other day about I never remember being a kid, being outside with shorts on playing at Christmas, but my children and my grandchildren, we've had Christmases in the 70s here. We used to, I don't think it was like that. I might just don't remember it, but I don't recall it. Good to have Rio here, Sharon's husband. He don't, he, he don't ever get to come on Thursday. There, he's here today, Sharon. Good to have him on Sunday. Uh, good to have Jenny back with us today. Good to have everybody in this house, all yeah. y'all. All of your family, if you've been here born twice, you're family anyway, so you part of us. We're glad to have you here to worship today. I hope that's what you're here for. Amen. If you're not, while we go through the prayer list, prepare your hearts to worship. That's what it's all about here, to open your heart, your mind, and your soul, your heart, all to Jesus, and just let's say what does say the Lord. He's going to help us. And uh, happy birthday. You know, we've got them two girls, Lisa's the oldest and Laura's the youngest, and Laura's proud of it. Seven, seven minutes. She still calls Lisa her old sister, her old elder. Uh, seven, seven minutes apart there. What about that? And didn't know there was going to be twins, did you, Miss Francis? Yes, sir. Well, if you could have stopped after the first one, you might have been better off. I don't know. <laughs> no. no, we're glad to have them here and glad to celebrate birthday with them. Amen. And if we don't get some anniversaries, I've threatened to preach on shacking up many times. And some of y'all just need to quit being ashamed of your spouse and go ahead and the church and get married. Don't look good. All right. <clears throat> Way of prayer. We got a huge prayer list over there. We updated it. And uh, Alice updates it every week on our Facebook page, chat page, whatever it is. And uh, to, But if we need anything today, if we got any special requests today, I've got one announcement that I wanted to make too before we start. Miss Jerry Berry. I want to thank Miss Jerry. Her and Bernie's came and been a part of the church now full time. And she has a card ministry. And if you haven't got a card from her and you'd like one, you just let her know. <laughs> Even if you're not sick and you just feel like nobody don't care, you let Miss Jerry know if you'll get one of them uplifting cards in the mail. Amen. Uh, right. Or if they know of someone. If you, if you know someone she can send a card yes. to, to reach out to, if you'll see her and let her know who it is, yes. and she'll get them a card in the mail. And it, You know, <clears throat> that's the thing that people don't do, cards and letters anymore. And uh, that's much more personable to me than a text message or something to get a phone call or a letter or a card in the mail just that, that somebody's caring, thinks about you and cares for you. Just to point out how, how precious it is to receive a card. I, we didn't get to do anything for Mother's Day this year, so the church sent out Mother's Day cards to all the ladies we could. And I sent one to Miss Naomi, and she called, and she was in tears over having received that card, how much it meant to her. It means a lot to a lot of folks. And, and, uh, but y'all, if you know anybody that Miss Jerry could send a card to to try to help them or encourage them, please let her know that she'll get the name and address and take care of it. She's been sending this to Mama. Mama appreciates it too. It tickles her. Yeah. And uh, it, it's good. I sent, I sent a few and then she came. She started doing that and she just took over. And, and it's amazing how God just sends people to do these little things that you think of that need to be done and how it, it encourages and helps people. You know, maybe uh, just like Miss Mary said, in a nursing home, they can't have company, they can't have nobody, just get a card to let you know that other people are thinking about you. What an encouragement, what a blessing. Anyway, way of prayer now. So we have anybody, that we need to remember Brother Bill back there, he's going to Idaho in October. He asked for us to pray for a safe trip there and back. And then he's facing prostate surgery in uh, January. So y'all remember to be in prayer for him. And your son's still doing well, right, Bill? Danny's still doing good? Yes, sir. He's doing real good. He's, he was home. He come home last Friday evening late. And uh, 
They didn't want any company, so they didn't tell me till Saturday morning. I went over and stayed a while with him. And he's doing real good, and he's up walking around, but they they really done a job of opening him up. And he's got holes all over his chest where they had tubes and stuff in him, draining him. But, I mean, he looks terrible, but the Lord's blessed him, and he's feeling good, and he's up walking around. But he's sore. Yeah. He's going to be sore for a while. He gets his strength back, but uh, he appreciates everybody praying for him, and, and he loves the Lord. He knows the Lord brought him through it. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Y'all continue, continue to pray for Danny from his heart surgery. Pray for Bill as he goes through his challenges now. Anybody else? Ms. Kay. Um, my neighbor, Horace Airwood, and his son, Dwayne, their Wayne's son got killed the other night. Somebody ran over him. He was going to get gas, walking on the side of the road to our understanding. And somebody ran over him and killed him. His, but Horace is my neighbor, and that's his grandson. What, what's Airwood. His, what's his son's name? Uh, I think it was Evan. Was it Evan? Something like that. Ethan. Maybe it's Ethan. Okay. He wasn't in there. Was it Airwood? Yes. What in David was it? That, that young man I picked up the road out here the other night was David Airwood. He was walking down the middle of Highway 10. He's about 30, about 27. Yeah, he just had the, his birthday was the very next day and he got killed that night. Oh, that might have been that young man. Remember that family, Horace Airwood, and remember that, that family. Anybody else? Uh, Maurice's daddy, Wayne Smith, he has very, and I think it's a secret, but the Lord knows, but he has very serious cancer in his jaw, bone in his jaw, and um, he is having extensive tests to make sure he can go through this. It's going to be a terrible surgery, um, but he did get cleared from his heart doctor. He's got to have one more test before he goes, but they're going to take bones from other parts of his body and try to... Ooh, do some stuff after they remove all that. It's bad. Okay. Wayne Smith, remember He's him? still out because I saw him in a golf cart a couple days ago going down Turner Road. So. Okay. All right. It's bad. Ms. Gallows? Uh, my parents, James and Selma Ledford, they're in a nursing home in Hickory, and they're so lonesome. They can't have company, and it's so hard on them. And let's pray for our president. Yeah, we will. You give her the, that, that, that nursing home and they'll get a card. We'll, we'll be glad to send the card. What's, what was her name? Selma Ledford. Selma Ledford. S-E-L-M-A. I'm James. And James, okay. Yeah, Miss Joy will send them a card from our church and that cheer them up a little bit. <coughs> Anybody else? Myrtle sick, Frank, or she just didn't come today? I think she's sick of me. Oh. <laughs> she, she went to the beach and didn't give me an oh. invite to go with her. So. Oh. Well, I know how you feel. Mine's going here in a few weeks too. Get to but. church on time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine's going with the other uh, Camp Creek ladies. They wouldn't even let the preacher over there. He said, y'all need a chaperone. They said, no, we don't. They wouldn't even let the pastor of the church go with them. So. I don't know what that's all about. Oh, I guess you get to play a lot of golf this week then. No, she left me a list. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, I'll pray for Frank this week. He's a honeydew. If I could hire her that, I'd go play golf, but I'd rather do it. it it's like she'll, be back. she'll be back one year. It's like that short lived it turns in from the honeymoon to the honeydew. <laughs> <laughs> the honeydew. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, pray for Merle for safe travel. Pray for Linda and Chris. Uh, practice for Crossfire's project. Pray, 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 pray that she comes back. Pray that she comes back. Pray that she comes back. Yeah, she probably got the credit card, so you need to get her back. <laughs> <laughs> no, pray, pray for safe travel for her. Uh, pray for Chris and Linda. They'll be getting married here in a few weeks, and they're excited about that. So uh, pray for them. And, and I was talking to them. What a blessing how God is doing. Y'all, everybody here that knew Linda, what she went through, and how God has, has worked a miracle 
She stood in the parking lot and told me in front of you, she said, you know, you might not remember this, but you told me out there just to keep the faith, God would bring another man that can play a guitar in your life one of these days. Trying to cheer her up with comforting words, and lo and behold, if you get with Chris Coon, who plays and sings, and they play and sing together, and what a blessing it is for both of them. They lost their, lost their spouses, and God's put them together and, and just doing a wonderful thing in their lives. So pray for them as they get ready to be ready, and then we will have an anniversary next October. <laughs> <laughs> Better start writing it down. <laughs> yeah, I'll pray for uh, Charlie and Doreen. Brother Charlie and Doreen will be gone next this coming weekend. Uh, they'll be on a trip, so pray for their travel, their safe travel, and uh, but they'll have a good time celebrating the birthday. We need to get her here. We can say happy birthday to her. But uh, anyway, pray for them as they'll be uh, traveling some this week. Anybody else? Our brother is going to be offering a dog again this coming Wednesday through Jerry Sears. He's kidding. What, what was his name again? Jack Phillips. Okay, he's probably here on there, but not on that show. son-in-law's mother, Eileen Hogan, that we've been praying for her. She was back at the hospital yesterday. She's, she, according to the doctor, she's getting ready to go into her transitioning period and pray for them and, and uh, for that family and for her for comfort. And uh, just pray, uh, you know, God will for them, for our grandchildren. We had them this weekend and trying to minister to them and our daughter and you know, it's hard when it's your own family and you'd have to be the one to do all that, but just pray, pray for them. Pray for Denise and I too. I mean, always pray for me, but pray for us as we go through that with them and try to help. Anybody else? Praise God that Cheryl's here. She don't have no, nothing to pray for today. Continue to pray for Victor, her husband, that yes. we can get him into the house. And, and Richard, um, what was, what's her name? Nat Natty? Natalie? Na Miss Natalie. Natalie. Do you know the last name? Uh, that is her last name. I don't know. Okay. Her last name. Yeah, it's Natalie. Natalie. I, yeah, it's Swiss. It's our neighbor right beside G. And um, she had kind of a mental breakdown yesterday and had to be taken to the hospital. And so just keep her in your prayers. Okay, and Miss Natalie. Oh, the old words. Yeah, anybody else? Pray for, uh, was Natasha Hall? Is that, we had a uh, lady here in, in case it was a home burn yesterday that I was informed of. Oh, Miss Hall. Pray for that family. Also, anybody else? Unspoken requests. All right, let's go to the Lord. Remember to pray for one another. The Bible tells us to do that. Pray for you, Pastor. Pray for me. Uh, just praise God for what he's doing here, too. Remember to give thanks in your prayers to thank God for his bountiful blessings upon us. Let's go to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus, God. I humble myself to come before the throne today, Lord. And you tell us in your word to come boldly. And we just come boldly expecting miracles from you, Lord. We just pray, God, your will be done. You know all of these that was listed on here today, Lord, the the need they have, and you knew it before we pinned it down. You know all the other needs on this list as it grows day by day. And Father, you know the needs of this world. And we know too the biggest need in this world today is a revival. God, that you would awaken the eyes of those that's asleep in America. We pray for our president. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our first responders, Lord, our, our 
police officers and fire department, sword and rescue personnel. God, we lift them up as they're in arms way right here in our own country. God, we don't understand it, but we know you do, and we know that it happens for a reason. You let things happen that we don't understand. God, we're just going to keep on being faithful and keep on marching on toward that mark and that blessed hope of being with you. And God, help us to be reminded not to go with our head down, but our head held up and, and just proclaiming the gospel as we march on towards home. Father, we pray for those that are sick. We pray for those that uh, the lady that has a mental issue. We pray for those that's facing death, those that's facing surgery, those that are traveling. God, we pray for safety for each and every one of them. God, we pray your will be done in each one of these lives. God, we pray your will be done in this church today, in this house, as we gather here. Lord, that your will be done here, that you'd open the heart, hearts and minds of us as we hear your word. God, we pray that the Holy Spirit have freedom to do your work in this house and in our hearts today. Father, we thank you for the time that we can come together. We thank you how you provided for us. We pray, God, you'd bless the service. We pray you'd bless each and every one here. Pray for those that's not here today for whatever reason. And Lord, we ask as we receive an offering today, you'd bless the giver, bless the church, help us to be a good steward. That we'd use what you give us for the uplift and building of the kingdom to minister to those that have needs and reach those that's lost. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name and all God's children say, Amen. 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 Mark and uh, Frank, will you help take the offering up the <coughs>
Christ's ministry, and we'd ever hear music like that. Amen. Hallelujah. And you want to hear it any better anywhere? Amen. And we're blessed to have not only a fiddle player, but a violinist in the We thank Miss Sharon for being here and uh, playing and sharing her music with us. And thank Cheryl. Beautiful piano.
we're blessed with a lot of good music, a lot of good saved on Thursday. Uh, we're just blessed here with the music in this church. I hope you're hearing the words of the Lord this morning. Some of these messages God's given me is kind of tough again. And uh, Brother Frank mentioned, I think last week, he, uh, he goes to Landmark where I used to go and then comes over here for our service. And he said, man, the preacher over there is on the same page. He said, you just preach about people getting saved all the time. I guess that's what you're supposed to do. I said, well, that's what we do. We want people to know the Lord. We want people to go to heaven. Uh, I feel like God is calling on his preachers to preach the gospel, to preach salvation. In the end days, the last days, we don't know when that's going to be, but it's looking that we're headed there. We know each day is a, a, one more day closer. So I'm going to preach what God puts on my heart. I look out there and I think I'm looking at a bunch of saints. And I've looked out there before and thought that, and some of the saints come up and got saved or rededicated. So here's another one, Frank. You know, there's a song that a lot of us old bluegrass people know that there's songs that everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody don't want to die. Right. And I, after I wrote this message, that may be the title for you there, Miss Alice. Miss, you know, Miss Alice titles all my messages, just about every one. I don't ever title it, you know, the message is my thing, not the title of it, and she puts it on the YouTube thing, the different things, so I said, you just come up with what you think you got out of it, and she does that for me, and I praise the Lord and thank her for it. Many people say they believe in Jesus Christ. Many people, you got a lot of friends, I've got a lot of friends and family, they believe and they say they're Christians, and they believe that, and they think they're going to go to heaven, and it troubles troubles me when I see the way some of them live and the way they walk and the things they do in life and it, it burdens my heart because a lot of them are my loved ones, the ones that, that are personal friends or family. Many say that, uh, they say that, they say they believe, they say they believe in Jesus, they say they're a Christian, but they don't live like they believe and the Word of God makes it real clear where to live the way God tells us to live. Uh, they, they, it causes me to have doubts about their spiritual life. Matthew 7, 14, I preached on this recently, where it talks about the straight and the narrow. It says that uh, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few. It don't say many, it says many on the wide road to destruction. Few there be that find it. I remember an old Marine slogan, y'all probably remember they used to have a slogan, the few, the proud, the chosen. And boy, I thought about that this morning, the few, the proud, I'm, I'm one of those few because I've made that choice in my life. And I'm proud and not ashamed to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says I've been chosen, I've been called out. And it also says come out from amongst them, be separated from this world. These friends of mine and these people that I know that proclaim to be a follower of Jesus Christ and never separated from this world and the things of this world, I can't help but have my doubts about them. I want to be a witness to them. I'm not preaching to be hard on anybody. I'm just like, the, you know, the Lord said, His will was none to perish, but all would have everlasting life. That's my heart. None should perish. Not even the one our enemies should come to God come to Jesus, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We should never wish that anybody would perish. Y'all have heard me say that? In my old days, I had that foul mouth. And I could never tell nobody to go to hell now, even if I hated their guts, because I found out what it's all about. My will is that none should perish, but all would come to Jesus and have that. Matthew 7, 21. This is from the Sermon on the Mount. I've been reading and studying in Matthew this is what Jesus Christ preached. The famous, what we call the Sermon on the Mount. In verse 21, this troubles me right here too. Jesus said these words, said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He that doeth the will of my 
my father. We can say anything we want to. Not everyone that calls my name is going to enter in. But he that doeth the will of the Father. In the book of James, the Bible says that we're to be doers, not hearers only, but doers to the Word of God. I can ask you today, and you can ask me, how you doing now? How you doing in that part? You know, it's so easy to say, we can look back, well, if that was me, I'd do it this way. But then when you have to go do it, it's just as hard for you as it is for whoever you watch and do it. It's not easy being a Christian. It's not easy. Many people think they can do it on their own. Many of these people he's talking about here think they're going to get into heaven on their own. They're not going to do it. There's only one way, and that's by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Believing in him and uh, dying to self and living. For everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody don't want to die. I got more out of that song this week than ever had, Charlie. I realize that means you don't want to die to self. It's not the fear of dying. We're all going to die. But you got to die to self. And what he's saying here, not he that hear it, but he that do it. Have you ever died to self? Have you give up all the self, all your uh, things that you want to do? Are you ready to live for God? Or are you going to keep on living for self and being hung up in this world? Verse 22, it says, Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? You know, I, I know a lot of people, I've got friends that are out here that's not in church. They say they're a Christian. And they tell people about church. They tell them about Jesus. They're not living the life, but they're telling others. And I, I thought about that. They're prophesying. They're out here telling others, you ought to get in church, you ought to give your life to Jesus. And they're not doing it themselves. You know, we think about the false teachers when we read that, people standing in the pulpit preaching. But I'm thinking about brothers and sisters that think they're going to heaven because of their good works and the things they do that don't do what God tells them to do. It says, though that doeth the will of the Father. Have we not prophesied? Have we not told others? We preach the gospel. We get out here and tell our friends, hey, we're getting church. Hey, you know, go to that church. It's not about church, folks. It's about Jesus. Amen. In thy name have we not cast out devils? I thought about that. You know, a lost man can tell somebody to go to church or to get saved. And they could even take the Bible and show them where it says it, and that man might believe it and get saved. And if he did, they'd cast some demons out of him. He turned his life over to Christ. But that man that told him about it is still a lost man. And this one right here is the big one. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Boy, how many people do you know that's working to go to heaven? That's one of the best parts about being a Christian, understanding God's grace. I don't have to do nothing to go to heaven except believe. I do my works because I do believe. Not to be saved, but because I am saved, I serve God. But that's a real good example of a hypocrite to me. When you, when you get to that last thing he says, many will say that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? We've told others. In thy name, have we not cast out devils? You may, they may have told somebody that got saved and helped them. In thy name, we've done many wonderful works. It's a good example of a hypocrite. Somebody acting like a Christian, one that plays church, is what I call them. They pretend to be a member of the family of God. They've been deceived by the devil, some of them. They don't realize what's going on. They don't have that personal relationship that he's talking about here. If you do, you'll do the will of the Father. They're a member of the family, per se, but they've never came to Jesus personally. Never came and made a personal relationship. Never been forgiven of their sin. Never admitted that they're a sinner, that they're the one that needs help. They're the one that needs salvation. They're quick to tell others. You know, one of my sermons I preach is from head to heart. Everybody you talk to them, they know about Jesus. But it's that personal relationship. It says when you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that thou shalt be saved. <coughs> Not everyone that calls me Lord, but he that doeth the will of my Father. <coughs> I 
A lot of people are in the church. I call it the house. God says you, he says this is a house of prayer. We come in here and pray, sing hymns and worship and open our heart to the Lord and he ministers to us. A lot of people come in here. They're not in the family. They're not in the family. They've never been born into the real family of God. They play church. They come and they worship. They go out and they tell others about it. But it's when you make that commitment. They say we've done many wonderful works. Many people come into the church and they give money. We've had law sinners come in here, I'm sure, and give money or donations to this church. They work. They help the poor. We know many lost people that will give to the poor. They'll buy food. They'll help poor. They do the works, but they never really believe. You know, we've been studying that. One of the things we uh, hit on in Hebrews, Charlie was talking about where God, where the man said, help my unbelief. We believe in Jesus, but help my unbelief. You know, a lot of people don't believe this part in here that says, but he that doeth my will, or do my Father's will. Verse 23, Jesus says, this right here, I, you know, I pray that none of us would ever hear this right here. But Jesus said, then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. I didn't even know you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You evildoers, that's what that means. That's a good example of the hypocrite. They said, I never even knew you. You going around telling everybody all about me, you, I don't even know. You might know me, but I don't know you. In John chapter 10, I had one verse, but I want to go read this. In John chapter 10, verse 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. My sheep, my people, my few that I've chosen, they hear me when I talk to them. And they follow me. They do the will of the Father. But you go back up 25, Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. See, Jesus knows me. He might not know you, but he knows me. You know him, but he has to know you too. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. And that's for all them hypocrites that don't believe Jesus is God. I and my Father are one, says so right there. That's what my whole salvation is based on. That's what I'm going to go to heaven not because I believe, but because I do the will of the Father. There's so many people they can't get past that. They can't get the peace and the joy. And they go to church and they think they're a Christian or they play Christian and they're still miserable. They're still under guilt. They're under shame. They try to do good to make it go away. You can't make it go away. Jesus Christ is the only one that will take your sin away, take that bondage away, open your eyes, fill you with the Holy Spirit, and give you peace and joy in your life. No matter what you're going through, he's the only one. My sheep hear my voice. In John 6, uh, verse 40, Jesus says, You know, what is the will of the Father? It says, He that doeth the Father's will. In 640, Jesus says, This is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him. Everyone that knows who Jesus is, everybody says they know him, but then it says, And believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. That's what my faith is, folks. That's what your faith ought to be in. Believing on him 
Not just hearing about it, not just believing he's there, but believe on him. Believe on his word. Believe on the gospel. God's will is that we believe in the salvation. The Bible teaches that we believe in our heart, profess with our mouth, and call on God, he'll save us. God's will is that we believe and we'll be saved from our sins. A lot of these people he's talking about here, he said, depart from me, I never knew you. You know how you come to know him? You're born again, you're born into the family. He knows, uh, he knows all about us. He knows everything, but he don't know you personally until you make a personal relationship with him. God's will is that we all believe in the salvation. If we're saved, we'll live like we're saved. If we're truly saved, Russell, he, he has a hard time. He don't understand why somebody says they're a Christian and they won't even come to church. They won't know what they're supposed to do. And then they're out here in the world still going to the honky tonk, still drinking, doing all the things. And they say they're crazy. He used to call me up and be mad as a hornet. He would tell me about people he knew personally. And they'd be on Facebook. One day they'd be putting scripture on Facebook and how they're blessed. And the next day they'd be talking about a party they're having that night getting a keg of beer. Russell God said, I don't understand them. I said, pray for them, Russell. If we're saved, we're, the Bible says we're to live like we're saved. Be ye doers. Walk the talk. If you're going to talk the talk, walk the walk. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Let's move on that to the night. We'll turn there real quick. Not that hard. Twelve, one and two. I beseech you. Do you know that by heart, Brother Charlie? Verse twelve. And Paul, Paul is talking here. He says, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove." What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? He says here that doeth the will of the Father. What's he saying right here? The will of the Father is the will of God. Being transformed from this world. Don't be conformed. If you're a child of God, you shouldn't live like the rest of the world. You should be separate. We should be consecrated. We're, we're, if you're truly born again, you're a saint of God. You're an ambassador. You're representing Jesus Christ walking on this earth. You shouldn't have anything else to do with this world. Be separated from it. Other than being light and a witness. We're to be separated. We're to be different. Back over in Matthew, verse 24. He says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man. And it goes on here, I'm going to talk about a foolish man. I don't want to be a fool. I want to be wise. You know, even, I thought about that, even the Christmas story. We always talk about those three wise. They were seeking God. A wise man is going to seek God. He's not going to seek the world. Therefore, whosoever heareth these says to mine, and doeth. Don't just hear them, but do them. I will liken him to a wise man which built his house on the rock. The rain descended and the floods came and the winds and it fell not. It stood. If you're doing the will of the Father, if you're a true Christian and you believe in God and you're doing God's will, you're going to stand. And this virus, this political thing we're going through, this upcoming election, maybe a civil war, it don't matter. Whatever it is, you're going to stand. If you're standing on God and His promises, if you're doing the will of the Father, for it was founded upon the rock. And in verse 26, it says, Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. Doeth them not. We hear. We got God's word. We got the Holy Bible. We got everything we need to be right in the middle of God's will. That's his desire for our life to be in his will. You want to go to heaven, you better be in his will. It says, He that doeth the will of the Father, not just know it. But every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And we know everybody in here, we're all adults. You built something on sand, it's going to sink. It's going to sink. It's not going to stand. 
said the rain descended, the floods came, the wind blew and beat upon the house, and it fell. But it says great was the fall of it. Great was the fall of it. One that hears it and does it, and one that hears it and don't do it. The one that hears God's word and does God's word and everybody's obedient to it, he's going to understand no matter what the storm. It's amazing how God gives people music in here. Terry talked about that the other week. That song they play until the storm passes by. I said, Terry thought about this message. No matter what the storm is, I'm in God's will. I'm in God's will. I'm doing the best I can do to do what God asked me to do. I'm going to stand in the storm. You may be on sink and sand. You might shift one way. You know, that's what happens to a weak Christian. They get on the sand instead of the rock, and then they start believing every little thing they hear. One week to over here, one week to over there. One week to end this church, it wasn't right. Next week to end that church, they keep looking. They keep looking. If a man's preaching the Word of God and you're going by the Holy Bible, it's right there. You're the one missing it. Somebody said the other day, Denise saw something on uh, Facebook. I don't remember exactly saying if a preacher preaches something and, and uh, it don't agree with you or something. If it's out of the Word of God, you're the one that's wrong, not your preacher. Amen. Amen. This book's true. God's true. Jesus is true. We might not like everything he says about us, but it's the truth. And the truth will make you free. And the people that don't believe this, they never believe it, they'd be free from their sin, guilt, and their bondage. But the rain came. You know, verse 27, at the end of that, it says, and it fell. But then he added just a little bit more there. Great was the fall of it. And I think, you go back to verse 21, what he said, the one that doeth the will of the Father, Many will call Lord, Lord. Oh yeah, I know you, Jesus. I know you, Jesus. Can I get in? Can I get in? I do all kinds of things. I give money over at that church. I, I give $500 on the building fund over there. I helped them. Yeah, I took food down there to them hungry people. I sent cards out, Mr. Judge. I sent cards to the sick. I done all these things. That don't matter to him. It does matter if you're a child to hear you're a good servant. But about getting into heaven, None of that's going to work. He's going to look at you and say, I don't know you. Get on out of here. And what he says is in here about it fell. It didn't stand. See, when you stand before God on judgment day, he that doeth the will, you're going to stand and you're going to enter in. But it plainly says that he that doeth not the will, it says, it fell, and great was the fall. And I think about how far it is from heaven to hell. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. <sighs> Judgment day. God's going to judge. People don't believe that either. Same people don't believe in Jesus, don't believe in judgment. They don't believe God's going to judge them. I saw a, a picture on the news this week. It breaks my heart. I, I don't know how people in our country, as much Christianity that's here and as much preaching as being in America, I saw young people holding up signs saying they wanted to go to hell. They was holding up. I'm on my way to hell and I'm proud of it. At these protests, I'm thinking, how the devil is working in these people's minds because we have not worked as hard as we should to get the gospel out. A lot of that falls on God's church. Not taking a stand and not preaching the word. Great is the fall. Is your salvation built upon Jesus Christ or are you standing on the rock? Are you standing on the rock? Are you standing on the and sand today? Do you do the will of the Father? Do you know it? Do you know the Bible? There's a lot. There's a, you know, the devil knew the Bible. The devil knew the scriptures. There's a lot of people out here lost in this world that know more Bible than I'll ever know. 
But if they don't believe it, don't believe in him, they're going to be the one. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity, you evil door. I never knew you. You're not getting in my house. You know, if strangers come up to your house and knocked on the door and you didn't know them, you don't let them in. He that doeth the will. What are you standing on today? God's promises, God's word. Do you know it? Are you living by it? Are you obedient? Obedient to be in God's will, doing his word? Are you being as a foolish man? The one that hears it. The one that comes in church and sits every Sunday. And that's even sat back there and say, hey, Amen. A lot of times when the preacher preaches on something they don't like. But they never believe it. They never believe it. They never take it to heart. A lot of people sitting in church today, their heart's been hardened. The Bible talks about that. They hear it so much, and when the Holy Spirit starts pulling on them, they start denying it. I'm not going up out front of this whole church and tell my own sinner. I don't want them to know our lives deep and chill, killed. That's the devil holding you back, folks. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody don't want to die. Are you being as a fool, the one that hears the word, but you doubt it? You remember Dr. Thomas, you know what happened to him. Do you doubt it or do you believe it? Not a hearer, but a doer. Over in Ephesians, Paul talks about this. Ephesians 5, verse 14. Paul said, Wherefore he has said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. You know when my light got turned on? About 40 years ago over in Bethel Baptist Church on a Sunday night. He flipped the switch when I let go of the pew, not when I got to the altar and turned the light on in me. He actually turned the light on while the preacher clamped it was preaching. You're going to die and go to hell, son. You're going to die and go to hell. God just started telling me, you're going to go to hell living the way you live. You're going to go to hell the way. And I held on to that pew. My knuckles was white and they, they were finger fancy. Some of these were people having to believe. I held on as long as I could. When I turned loose, I thank God got me right then. I went to that altar crying. I saw the light. I saw the light. But it says, Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. I don't claim to be a smart one bit. Y'all know me. I'm a high school dropout, GED, student, went to a little bitty Bible college thing down here in South Carolina. That's all I got. As far as credentials, but I got him. That's all I need. I'm not a fool. I'm a wise man. I chose God over this world. That's what he's saying here. This man built his house on the rock. He's a wise man. He built it on this world. He's a foolish man. And when it comes judgment day, he's going to say, depart from me. I don't know you. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Boy, don't we live in evil days now. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. I hope today that you understand what God's telling us here. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom. But he that doeth the will of my Father in heaven. It's easy to say that you can do something, but it's hard to do it. You know, I've heard preachers say, you just give your life to Christ, get in church, everything's going to be so good for you. It don't get hard to you give your life to Christ because we're in the world. Everybody else in this world is living for the world. We want to live for the world. I live for Christ. I have to say no to all that stuff. I have to say no. I don't want that anymore. I don't want all this evil stuff. My home's in heaven. I'm just visiting. I don't like this trash pile y'all got. You got to separate yourself. He says, be transformed. Don't be conformed. Don't be like it. Be separated from it. Yeah. He that doeth the will. It's God's will. We separate ourselves from this filth out here. 
he that doeth the will of our Father. Are you willing today to hear God's word? Are you here today and you know who Jesus is? We all know baby Jesus in the little manger. We've known it all our life. They'll probably quit teaching all that now too, but we know, bless God, we're the group that knows. We need to be the ones teaching it. They're not our children and great we Denise and I teach all we can to our little grandkids. You know what God gave me the boldness yesterday to do to my little grandson, Denise gonna get mad. <laughs> little children, you know, I've used this illustration before and I made some women at Camp Creek mad one day because two ladies in the church had newborn babies and I was preaching on sin. We're born. I was a druggie. I done all that. I'm ashamed of it. God saved me from a mess. But if you've never done any of that, you was born a sinner. Yes, sir. You're born a sinner. That's right. You don't have to do anything to be a sinner. You're born. It comes from birth. I told these ladies, I explained that, and I used their little babies. And I said, you know that little baby over there when he gets a little bigger and he's going to be in the high chair and you're giving them bowl and green peas and he don't like them, he's going to knock them in the floor. And when you say, Junior, do you do that? He's going to smile at you and say, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Little babies lie. They lie. They're sinners. They take each other's toys. Our, our grandkids fight every time we have them over toys. But they lie. I'll say, did you do that? No, Papa. And I know they're lying, and I'm trying to teach them not to. I told my, I told my children, I said, I don't even care if it's wrong. If you get in trouble, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. I can't help you if you're in trouble if I don't know the truth. Tell me the truth. I hate liars. I hate liars. God hates them too. It's in the Bible. My little grandson, like they lie, they blame everything on each other one. And little Ben, that is going to fuss at him. His grandma's dying and he knows it. And his dad and mom has told him that they'll see him again in heaven and trying to comfort them. And I told little Ben, I said, Ben, you know something? You know I know a lot about the Bible and God because I'm a preacher, don't you? And he says, yeah, Papa. And I said, the Bible says that liars don't get to go to heaven. And I said, if you want to see Nana again, you better quit telling these lies so you can go see her. And I hope it helps him not to lie. And I'll tell the others, God put it on my heart, I'll tell the others the same thing if it'll help them not to lie. They don't, people don't need to lie. You know, liars, you tell one lie and then they have to tell another to cover up that one. I've got friends, one in particular, that I think they lie so much they believe what they're telling and that they don't know what to lie no more when they talk. Go ahead, Russell. Amen. That. Not everyone that says me, Lord, Lord, will enter, but he that doeth the will. Are you willing to just hear God's word and think you're going to go to heaven, saying that you know Jesus? Are you willing to die to self? To die. The Bible says to live for Christ, you die to self. You have to die to self. Be born again to the family of God. Do the things that God... God tells us to do that. Are you willing to do the will of God? Or just hear it today? Everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. You know, as a Christian, we ought to look forward to death. Our death, our body, our physical death. Because in our physical death is when our spiritual birth is going to kick in. We won't really start living until we die here. Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with Him. Miss Jerry and them sang that song, and I love it. What a day that'll be. When his face I'll see when he takes me by the hand. But it says, not those that hear the word, but those that do the word. Charlie, if you'll come, I challenge you today to search your heart. <coughs> the devil is a deceiver. The devil is a liar. God calls him a father of lies. He's the one who invented them. He'll lie to you. He'll let you sit in the church. And he'll make you think you're born again and you're going to heaven. And you know what you do every day. You know what you say. You know what you think. You know how you live.
But God says, Jesus, that's in his sermon. That's in the red letters in my Bible. He that doeth the will of the Father will enter in. Folks, I want to show with you, you can fool others. You can fool me. You can't fool God. God knows your heart. If you're here today and you're not sure about your salvation, the Bible says today is the day. Today. They may not be here tomorrow. I don't know if that young man that was mentioned in the prayer list, if that was that Arrowwood boy I picked up, I tried to talk to him about the Lord. He was so messed up on drugs or alcohol. He, he he couldn't understand what I was talking. I invited him to church. I hope I get to meet with him again. I don't know if that was him or not. That was his last chance and my last chance. I feel guilty for not working harder. But I feel sad for him if he didn't know Jesus, if that's who it was. We don't know. We don't know when that time's coming. But the Bible says we can know that we're born again. If you're here today, sorry if you'll do one more course of that. If you're here today and you're not sure, I'll take the Bible, I'll sit with you, I'll, I'll help you anywhere I can. It's my Let will that nobody perish.
be all of us stand before you now. We are, we've heard the word of God today. Lord, we're accountable to what we heard. You spoke to our hearts. Lord, help us now to believe what we heard.